When you think of Mexico City, you may picture something like this. But that's not the full story. You may be surprised to hear that you'll also find some of the wealthiest suburbs in the entire country right here. In this video, we'll take you on a tour of three of the most prominent neighborhoods in CDMX, as well as we'll be sharing the best things to eat, see and do. And be sure to stick around until the end because we're going to be sharing a really cool rooftop bar. So we're starting our tour with the icon of Polanco, which is the Somaya Museum. Uh -huh. Somaya was opened by Carlos Slim and he actually built the museum in honor of his late wife who loved art and her name was Somaya. If you look closely, it's got a little hexagon, hexagons, pentagons, I'm not sure, but it looks like a beehive, which is really cool. One of the good things about this museum is that the entrance is for free, so let's go and take a look. It's freaking spectacular in here and we've only just seen the entrance lobby. While neither of us are particularly big on history, we were very impressed with the collection that they've put together. With over 66,000 pieces from the Renaissance all the way up to the 20th century, there's more than enough to keep you busy for at least an hour if you sweep through just like we did. If you're a museum person, this should be at the top of your list. It's just absolutely spectacular. Five floors and we made it all the way to the top. Just the scale of everything inside there, just thinking about the amount of people that it took to put that collection together and to get it all inside the museum is just mind blowing. Yeah. It's absolutely spectacular. Have some light nice down there. Beautiful, eh? Amazing. So we're just going on a walk to our next destination and something that I'll say about this area is it must be like a commercial hub because we just are surrounded by skyscrapers, beautiful skyscrapers, which again is not something we're used to seeing in the Riviera Maya. I'm assuming this is the financial hub Although we've seen quite a few chapels already, we specifically wanted to come to St. Augustine Parish or Par pa Parroquia de San Agustin. How do you Parro say it? Parroquia de San Augustin. Parroquia. Parroquia, because it's absolutely ma magnificent in its scale and also in its details. Yeah. We're not going to be able to film so much inside because it looks like there's mass happening right now. Just from the outside alone, the building is definitely worth coming past to see. It's absolutely yeah. it's, incredible. It's at least 70 meters. No, like 50 oh, meters. Oh. Mexico is not a place where people often have freestanding homes. Homes are typically built r with a sharing wall. Yeah. But right in front of us, now behind me, where is it? There it is. <laughs> the most beautiful home that I've seen so far here in Polanco. Something what we have seen as well here is there's a lot of embassies, or I will say that's the hub of the embassies in the entire Mexico City because we have passed through the Indian Embassy, the Libyan Embassy. I know that the South African Embassy is here. It's the only South African Embassy in Mexico. If earlier we said that Polanco is the Beverly Hills of Mexico, well then this avenue that we're on right now, Presidente Mazarik, is the Rodeo Drive of Polanco. It's actually one of the wealthiest avenues in the entire country, I would say. It is the wealthiest avenue in the entire country. The commercial rental here is the highest in the entire country. I have no idea what they are paying, but it's exorbitant. If you're looking to go shopping, but you're specifically looking for well-known international brands, this is where you're going to find them. This is also where you're going to find some of the nicest restaurants in the city. I'm not going to lie, coming down here and seeing this is really beautiful and it, honestly it reminds me of my own city but something that I, I just noticed is that, that it doesn't really feel very Mexico you know it, it feels like a very curated space <laughs> You can tell from my smile, I am excited for this. <laughs> if you spend any amount of time in Mexico City walking the streets, you'll notice that one of the most common street snacks are actually churros. A gentleman came over from Spain in 1932, I believe, and he established Churreria El Moro, which is now the most famous churreria in all of Mexico City. There's over like 10 branches here. Um, but he is actually the reason why churros are so popular all across the country, but specifically in Mexico City. Hot chocolate with milk and churros okay so basically churros are deep fried dough deep fried dough covered with like usually the traditional churro comes with like normal sugar but this is sugar and cinnamon mm. 
Mmm, this is that crunch. They're golden and crunchy and crispy on the outside, but on the inside, they're just so soft and delectable. There is not a single churro that compares to Chura Real Moro. Seriously, they really, really are something worth stopping for. So like we mentioned, this area of Mexico City is very green. Definitely way more green than what the rest of the, the city is. Right now we are at the Lincoln Park, which is actually named after Abraham Lincoln, as in Abe Lincoln, the former president. There yeah. he is, right there. <laughs> and actually this is uh, the standing Lincoln. If you go to DC, you will, you will find the, the, the sitting one in a big, big sculpture. This park was named after Abraham Lincoln because he was opposed to the US invasion into Mexico in the 1840s. Oh hi! Oh hi! Giovanni and I are currently on the mission of visiting all 32 states of Mexico. While we do that, we're going to share what it's like to live and travel in Mexico. So if you're interested in traveling or moving to Mexico, please consider subscribing to our channel so you never miss an upload. You're never going to be exposed to the sun for too long. There's always a place to come and sit, take it easy, because the trees here really provide full coverage over the entire park. Even though we're super impressed with this park, there is a park in Mexico City that you absolutely cannot miss. It's basically like the central park of the city. Actually, they say it's even bigger than the Central Park in New York. Yeah. So we have officially entered the central park of Mexico City, otherwise known as Chapultepec Park. So the, the thing is, the park is so big and we've got so many more things to see today that we're just going to be able to show you a little bit. But seriously, there's so much to do in the park that you could carve out an entire day for it. Seems very quiet, eh? Yes, but also keep in mind it is a Tuesday and from what I've seen, the park is very quiet in the week, but it gets very busy on the weekend. So if you're looking for a quiet park experience, we definitely recommend heading here during the week. This park is immaculate and such a nice way to escape the hustle and bustle of the city. We just took a quick stroll through the park, but we explore extensively in a future video. So you might want to subscribe so you don't miss it. This park is considered the lungs of CDMX. Yes, because the air is actually so polluted that when Giovanni and I got out of the airport yesterday, we, we could smell it and we could taste it. Yeah. This is basically the end of our tour of Polanco. Don't underestimate the size of this neighborhood. It's really massive and we really just scratched the surface now and it's already three o'clock in the afternoon. So yeah. if you are doing Polanco, definitely plan to do a full day. Our next neighborhood is uh, Juarez, but to be honest, it's a little bit far from here. So we're going to take a Uber. Juan Carlos? Well, we're now in Colonia Juarez, and basically this is kind of like the, the hub of the food in Mexico City. Well, like the international cuisine, the international yes, side yes. of the Mexican this, this cuisine. This is really where you want to come if you're a real foodie and you're looking for Mexican food, but you're specifically looking for international cuisine, which is exactly why we've chosen for lunch to not go to a Mexican restaurant, rather we're going to something more international. We've come to One One, which is a Japanese restaurant, which we're super excited to try. We decided to go with at least one one sushi roll. We got spicy tuna. It looks really good. I've never actually mastered, mastered the art of using chopsticks. Mm. Super fresh. Very nice. I don't know how to eat the chopsticks. Would you order it again? No. To be honest, no. The sushi, yes. I will try the sushi again. But the ramen... This area of Juarez was actually one of the wealthiest areas back in the 1900s. The wealthy people were moving here to establish themselves because they were close to the Chapultepec forest. Our next stop is Paseo Reforma, which is the most famous avenue in, the, in all of Mexico City. Paseo Reforma is actually home to one of the most important landmarks in Mexico City, so we're on our way to go and see her right now. Oh, and there she is. The Angel of Independence. So the thing is, we really want to get across to the, the little island where the Angel of Independence is to take a closer look. But the thing is, this is one of the main turn fares. It's like five lanes wide. 
<laughs> we made it! <laughs> wow. wow! The biggest and most elaborate monument we've seen so far here. This is without a doubt one of the most uh, iconic landmarks in Mexico City. This is one of the main points where people come to celebrate and also to protest. They're not protesting the angel, they're just using it as a meeting point yeah. to start a protest. Yeah. There's a lot of protests that happen in Mexico City. El Angel de Independencia. Yeah, very good. You're yes. getting closer. <laughs> which is basically the structure that was built to celebrate the independence of Mexico, which happened in 1810. But this building was built on the 100th anniversary on 1910. There must be a staircase that goes the entire way up the column because there's actually a balcony around the, the angel. So getting up there, getting a view from there would be absolutely incredible. However, I don't think it's a possibility at all. I don't think so. No. <laughs> Right behind me is Paseo de la Reforma or Reforma Avenue which is basically the main avenue that runs right through Mexico City and if you're in the Condesa area you really can't miss it. But one of the main, main things to do here is actually take a walk along the street. Not only is it beautiful, it's actually modeled after European boulevards and all along this boulevard you're actually going to find the tallest buildings in all of CDMX. We've technically left what is now and we're headed into our third neighborhood of the day which is Condesa. <laughs> Ah, gracias. Condesa is also a little bit far from where we were, so we decided to get another Uber. We've done a lot of walking today, so taking Uber is honestly just the most convenient thing for us right now. After a quick Uber drive, we are now officially in our third neighborhood of the day, La Condesa, which is actually more like an old wealth kind of place. <laughs> You'll see the buildings here are a little bit more dated. It's more like an Art Deco, uh, Art Nouveau kind of style. Here where you can find like, you know, like the junk, like young people like business people also like the, the hipsters, hipsters. <laughs> and this is actually the place that's known for its nightlife and its bar scene which is why we've left this as the last neighborhood that we're going to visit because we are going to take you to a beautiful rooftop bar for sunset drinks so we're going into La Condesa Hotel Because we are in one of the most elite areas in Mexico City, even though there is no official dress code, people definitely are dressed up really nicely here. It is definitely more of like a classy classic vibe. What are you gonna order, Simon? I think I might have a, a mezcal. So I got the uh, cucumber mezcal cocktail. I don't like tequila. Mezcal, on the other hand, I love because it's got a very distinctive smoky flavor. Mm -mm -mm. I actually got a margarita mezcal, which basically is a margarita, but instead of tequila, you have mezcal. Something I can say about this um, rooftop bar, you can see actually a lot of foreigners. You can see like these places are targeting more like the foreigner, the expat community, the expat community mm -hmm. exactly, the foreigners who live here in CDMX. Yeah. What's the hotel? It's drinks up there were absolutely amazing to be honest we wish we could have stayed a little bit longer but we've got one more stop so yeah we're gonna take a little walk over there and show you when we get there we're at Mercado Roma Mercado Roma it looks like this is where all the young cool people come Mercado Roma it seems like it's just a, an indoor market that's filled with like little cocktail bars and things like that So if I had to explain the concept of Mercado Roma, basically it's like a very small indoor market and it looks like everyone that is a vendor here is like an independent vendor because as you walk through everyone like approaches you to, to sell their product and um, it mostly seems like it's food items. They've also got communal seating where people seem to be sitting and ordering like a drink from this place, bagel from this place, uh, marquisite from this place. It's kind of like a food court. Yeah, I would say like a food. Like, like a food. Like yeah. We ordered a passion fruit mezcalita. So basically mezcal, like the other version of tequila that we had a little bit earlier, but with passion fruits and it's all blended with ice. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually way better than either of the cocktails we had earlier at the fancy rooftop bar. Very good. 
And just to clarify, Mercado Roma is technically in the suburb of Roma, which is not Condesa. However, it lies just on the border of Condesa and Roma. So we really hope that you enjoyed our tour of all the fanciest neighborhoods in Mexico City. Just, there is so much more to see in each of the neighborhoods. We kind of just skimmed the surface of each of them. Uh, if you really want to explore them, we'd at least carve out one day per neighborhood, but we did all three in one day. So it's just a very brief overview. If you like this video, please give us a big thumbs up. Let us know in the comments what do you think about the fancy of Mexico City. <laughs> Share it with your friends. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't subscribed. That being said, we will see you in the next one. Hasta, Hasta luego. Yeah, la bandera, la bandera para la porra. They just chucking it on like that. <laughs> Join us next week where we take you to the most iconic stadium in Latin America. Tacos come from Mexico City, specifically in Pasto.